even think that's right hat. <laughs> yeah, our hat is kind of stupid. Fedora. <laughs> Welcome. It's a Welcome. <laughs> we just got back uh, from Doctor Sleep, <laughs> which is a Stephen King novel uh, that came out in uh, 2013. Well, a follow up to the amazing The Shining, the book, and the Stanley Kubrick film uh, shortly after the book. And Dr. Sleep sort of serves as, a, you know, a, a sequel of a, a bits um, to The Shining. And um, what, what can I say? It's starring uh, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> I can't ever say his first name. Ewan McGregor and um, the lady with the hat. <laughs> and call her rose yeah I, I actually really really enjoyed this one uh i thought it was amazing interesting fascinating uh well shot well acted mm -hmm. and uh i love the universe that they've uh created and expanded obviously stephen king's universe expanded the lore of the shining and what it is to shine, shine and shine. I think it it was well done, and I think you should go out and see it if you're fascinated uh, with The Shining or Stephen King. Uh, because the one thing that I can say about the movie that it gets uh, that's the highest honor is it really does feel like I'm reading a book. It, it feels like a book concept filmed correctly on, on screen. Uh, it's not without some issues, uh, but. I really think you should go out and see this one. I enjoyed it, and um, I did too. I what thought did it was you a great guys follow think? up and uh, just looking into Danny's life after The Shining, after all that that happened, yeah. going through his traumatic events, and I could see how what led him through his path. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, it was pretty deep. I really enjoyed this film, though. Like, really? Yeah. So you liked it? Oh, I did. Okay. I did like it. Let's go to but Alex it did have because some you and me. It did have some okay. problems, but... Okay, we'll talk. We'll get <laughs> yeah. to those in a second. Well, I'm a big Shining fan. Like, I yeah. love the original film. I read the book. I saw the miniseries it did on Fox wow. when we were kids. Uh, oh. Those were really... Those are good. I read Dr. Sleep when it came out. And this was a movie I was excited for. And I, it... it didn't really disappoint. There was a couple little things, but I really liked it, and I think it's definitely worth seeing. <laughs> we are now, together that, on this that, one. That being the said, part, there's some there's some, some it, things. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm with you go on that. On, go out and see this one, guys, if you're a fan of uh, Stephen King and, and The Shining. Uh, but here's a, a great honor that I think the film uh, achieves. It's a sequel, but it's its own thing. Um all the way up until the last little bit. I got to say, it did its own thing. It's a different kind of thing than Stanley Kubrick's film. And it's successful. And I don't, I can't think of another example of like sort of a film franchise, you know, a sequel that does it better than the original, but does it completely differently. I wouldn't call this a horror like I would call yeah. the original Shining. This is more, oh, wow, what would you call this? A super kind of heroish uh, thriller, investigation, uh, discovery, mm -hmm. exploration of the this other kind of power or something. So, and can you think of one that's been done well where you take uh, an original concept? Like, so, for example, uh, what we just got through, <laughs> Dark Fate, which destroyed the Terminator Yeah, I was going to say that. Franchise. I like this one because it actually stick, It stayed close to the lore. Mm -hmm. It didn't shit all over it. It didn't destroy it, like, the lore. So, all right. so <laughs> that's a good thing. It didn't destroy the lore. <laughs> In fact, it paid respect to it the did, lore. Yeah. It probably did too much like the greatest hits kind of thing towards the end. Yeah, but we'll get to yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm saying is in T1... T2 was basically T1 just amped up Sorry. on action. <laughs> this one is is something different, in my opinion, yeah. than that. I mean, you're not, uh, you know, sort of dropping into insanity. You're not isolated in a hotel, and there's a lot less horror elements. It's not scary. Mm -hmm. If you're going to this film expecting to be scared, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah you're going to have a bad time. But... It pleases in almost every single way. So uh, great performances, great concept, executed very well, pays respect to the original, and it's its own thing. Do you need any more reason to go out and see it? No, go out and see it, right? We should yeah. give it a rating. 
right now. But let's go ahead and talk about w- what kind of didn't work or what held the film back. Because as I was watching, I was like, I'm going to give this thing a nine. This is going to be a nine. And then towards the end, I, I was feeling a little bit of strain in, in, in the length. But that didn't bother me. The length, It's lengthy, but... I'm satisfied and I'm gratified that I'm still in this world. Yeah. It feels like two books put together, honestly. Uh, but it, it never exhausts me on the length. So I wasn't really going to dock it for that. But once it reaches the third act, um, it goes from being its own thing to sort of paying respect to the original uh, when, uh, okay, uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler. Should I say the don't setting? Say don't. Okay. So it, but it pays too much respect to the original in the third act, sort of like mm. playing like a highlight reel. And when we're going, when we're doing highlight reels, that doesn't have the same impact uh, that exactly. it had in the original. Yep. Yep. And, and I think they basically <clears throat> tripped on their shoelace just a tiny bit, just a stumble. Did it, did anybody see that <laughs> at we the did. end? This movie had huge pacing problems, and I this was a movie that I'm sitting there and I'm going, God damn, this movie is long, but I didn't check my watch. Mm-hmm. That's something that I do when yeah. a movie is too long, and watch. I'm like, when is this over? I'm, I'm sitting there going like, wow, they are taking their time with yeah. this stuff, and I really appreciated it. And then in the last 10 minutes, there should have been 30 minutes, and then they're like, nope, 10 minutes. Over there, there yeah. Was, there, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but like the Steve, it's a Stephen King ending, and yes, it wasn't that the ending exactly itself wasn't satisfying, because the ending was yeah, satisfying. Yeah, ending! Alex. <laughs> yeah, but so I did like the ending. I like I, on paper, I liked the way that it ended. I don't like the way that they sped the through the ending. Stuff, yeah. If you're going to set, have time, they sit there and they drive, and you're eating up the scenery, and then they go to on these this other little thing, and they're nothing's happening. You're just watching them drive. You cut out 10, 15 minutes of that from Replace the beginning of the movie, the and then stuff. really mm-hmm. give me the good stuff at the end of the movie. This movie would have been a nine, I think. Yeah, but they didn't, and yeah. so they took their time until I didn't want that. I didn't want them. <laughs> And then it's they like, why, why did you they rush? had to rush the, well, there the was last no reason bit for it yeah. in in that 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 third act. Joe, you agree with that? No, I 100 percent agree with that. Um, whenever we got out, I was like, how long was that movie? Because it felt yeah. pretty long. And, but it, I did wanted, anybody look it up? Somebody look. You look it up. Yeah, and I wanted to see more of the third act, like uh-huh. he was oh, saying. Oh yeah. But I think uh, Abra. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna call her Abra because it was like a magic trick. Yeah, it's, yeah. she that did a great is her job. Name, Joe, her name is Abra. Yeah, well, I'm saying. Oh, the actress. Okay. The actress. Yeah, she yeah, did a great job. I like yeah, that. Yeah, actually. she did a great. Usually mm-hmm. child actors have yeah. an issue. And in fact, there is another child in this film that gives a great performance, a horrifying performance. There are, I think, maybe two scenes in this film that kind of, it didn't scare me. It horrified me. I hated yeah. watching it. It's shocking. It's sort of a little, you know, it's it's this film's it's most shocking moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that child actor did, did a great job as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so great performance. Oh, is all around well filmed I love the synth um uh, undertones and track that they had at the beginning and towards yeah. the end and the un- and then they had this pulsing uh heartbeat throughout the whole film which really sort of set the tone and gave it its own otherworldly kind of uh, feeling uh and, and gave greater context to the images that you were seeing how long was it's it it's two and a half hours okay what well, it's how what is the exact min- minute count uh two and a half hours plus 1 minute Oh, two, okay, two hours, 31 minutes. I'm curious because Rise of the Skywalker is two hours and 35 minutes. No, and I'm like, good. this was satisfying length. They got a lot of story crammed in there, except for, you're right, the way they paced it. They yeah. took a little bit too much time in maybe the second act on different things when if you expanded the location and the sequence, uh, the basically the climax of the film – in a more satisfying way and kept a lot more stuff there, then we could have gotten that 9 out of 10. But we're arguing semantics at this point. Well, you, yeah. you Let's go down, ahead. You have those notes when you're writing and all of a sudden you realize that you're too close to the border so you start yeah. writing really small. That's what this movie felt like. You're like, yes, I'm going to do my I best like, cursive. It's like, oh, shit. Oh, I got to go sideways. Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you some. I'll tell you in the spoilers, but just realize if, if you're curious, if there's any payoffs from The Shining, there is. Here's angry. 
Give us yeah. your final rating, guys. Well, we already basically talked about it. I say this is going to be an eight for me. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed this film, and it was a great continuation. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I think this is uh, definitely above average. You. It's going to satisfy yeah. everything that you like. And then this is something that I liked the book. I liked the original movie. I liked the original book. And this kind of blends them all together. If you read the book, you're going to see little nods to things that are only in the book and not in the movie. And I, I, really? I, I, the, okay. well, you, you yeah, pointed one out. Yeah. Yeah. So, Joe... Did you watch The Shining? Like I you did said last you would, night. Mm-hmm. And you still liked it just as much. Because yeah. often when you watch the original and you watch this new thing, it's not quite as good because you oh, can see still the first yeah, yeah. yeah. so still good. Great. That's good. All right. So uh, eight, eight, and I am going to go with an eight. <laughs> Guys, go out and see oh, Dr. That. Sleep. Did not expect this sequel. I thought maybe they'd kind of we- wheelchair out the old shine in there and, <laughs> you know, try to capitalize off that and not really have much to say. But it turned out to be an extension of an interesting universe doing its own thing, but then paying homage to the original. Maybe a little too much dipping in there, well, but it does work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of how you see it. So we'll talk about that in spoilers. Yes. Thank you so much. Let's make this one short, and we'll see you in the spoiler section. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the spoiler section. Uh, okay, so... What are we talking about? Well, we go to the hotel. I don't think that was in the trailers, so I didn't want to spoil it. It's in the trailers. It is in the trailers, but you, damn it, I should have talked about it. Well, in you don't want to say you like don't basically up, he's I mean. acting like Jack. Well, I do want to. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but I was going to say that uh, the, the recreations of the hotel were done extremely well. They give this hotel its own life. So basically, the story is you've got these people that feed on the shine. They are their own kind of creatures. They're kind of no longer human. And uh, they feed on this, and so they are kidnapping children and murdering them. And because the shine is most powerful in the children, they talk about pure, how, how you grow older, shine. it gets a little greasy, it gets a little dirty. Tastes like so whiskey. Th- they are kidnapping children. <laughs> at one point, you know, they kidnap a little girl at the beginning of the film, but you don't see anything. Uh, that's a the good child actress. And then you go on to the this boy. Uh, who I've seen him before in something. He was in Good Boys. Good Boys. Yeah. That's what it was. He's a good actor, and uh, he's this baseball uh, kid, and he's, uh, he's a he cheater. He's a cheater. My- he's a, yes, <laughs> he's cheater a cheater. Get- <laughs> he's a cheater. going to say. So his che- this cheater gets his up and comings. No, it's terrible, Joe. This it's little extreme. boy. I didn't. It's extreme. Hey, I, yeah. We didn't say up and coming. We just said he's a they cheater. Freaking stab him. There's yeah. blood on him. He's him. screaming for his life. They're torturing. This is a little kid. I don't think I've seen a scene like this in quite a while. And they're like literally feeding off of his, his fear, fear and torture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As as the more life fades from you, you're, you you shine. puff out this smoke, and they Steam. suck up the smoke, and that's what sort of gives these creatures, uh, these uh, you know villains. Extended life. They've seen Cursed empires life. rise and fall. Uh, this grandpa character has seen so much. Um, and that's basically the the premise. So how do you defeat them? Well, uh, we come across Abra, who is extremely powerful with the shine. And eventually, over the course of the film, she uh, becomes pen pals in a in a sort of way with uh, Danny, our character from the original Shining. And they're pen pals. And then when she uh, starts to see visions of them capturing these children, she wants to put a stop to it. She's taking a stand, and she manages to bring Danny into this. Uh, so, and Danny has his own things going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's his trying to put demons. his life together. So this mm-hmm. is interesting stuff. This is real character focused film um and and they replace sort of the the great hotel stuff with character development which is why you kind of cared about these characters Mm -hmm. danny you know is an alcoholic alcoholic. uh Mm -hmm. but recovering just you know homeless fighting stuff like that that. that girl die that in the beginning scene right direction uh uh, we don't know if it's a bad dream or not but yeah so i don't think so because he's like there's a dead baby yeah he's like uh, i see flies whenever like someone's about to die or something and he's, he's yeah there, he sees flies, flies and the baby and the 
girl. Yeah. 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 Uh, you're gonna have to tell explain that one to me a little later, but okay. I'm in the middle of the explanation. So, so you got that, and then finally, uh, so they they detect her that she's very powerful, mm-hmm. and they are starving because the shining. I guess they kind of make this reference to you know you got a lot of social media, you got cell phones. They don't know what it is, but it's the shining Netflix. is dimming and dimming and dimming. <laughs> Uh, but she is like the whale. She's like the grand ultimate. So they come towards her and they, they, they can like m- manipulate you and make you do things by telling you they got a subplot with this girl, 15 year old girl who has been abused by men uh, earlier in her life. And so she get, getting back out of there and then they turn her right. They either feed on you or turn you. And that was one example of somebody turning. Um, anyway, the, con- uh, the conclusion is like, how do we defeat them? Well, they first lure them out with a trap, and you've got basically, you know, gunfire takes them out, and and then you have an ultimate battle with Rose, who is the leader, and she's got this little magic hat or whatever, right? That's uh, the only creative imagery that this film has that The uh, Shining has. Otherwise, it kind of, you know, just rips off all the imagery from The Shining, Because we go to the hotel again Mm -hmm. and you see all the imagery. You see the bloody elevator. You see the twins. uh, You see the, The you know, the bartender and driving around. And they use the hotel because they say the hotel is its own kind of thing and its own kind of monsters. And they're hungry, too. And they have the hotel feed on on this other demon meat monster creature. Great concept. Very interesting. Very satisfying. Um, but let's talk about this specific moment. They, they just roughed, they rushed through that end yeah. part so fast. So Danny has the ability to create like a mind prison. Mm-hmm. And so Dan, the reason that Danny is homeless and an alcoholic is that he's been getting attacked by the Overlook ghost his entire life. Yeah. And so he's terrified all the time. Dick Holleran comes back as like a Jedi spirit and says, mm-hmm. look, I'm going to teach you how to make a mind prison. You lock up these ghosts the way I had to lock up my grandfather, uh, which is something they, they touched on in the book that yeah. they didn't do very much in this movie. Yeah, and and, and and the book uh, had the hotel have ghosts, really. like Oh, the ghosts. original Shining one. And, yeah, sure. And the movie Shining was more about a descent into madness. And Cabin maybe he fever, was already yeah. man mad. But no, they, they kind of recapture the lore for Stephen King and say, no, the, in the hotel, there is something in the hotel and they're ghostly and it yeah. has its own thing. Which was kind of in the film too, but yeah. So he makes a mind prison, and so he has everyone that's ever been in the Overlook, like the the tub lady, the twins, all of the party the butler, party guests, the butler, mm-hmm. and the original manager are all like locked away in his mind prison. So he lures Rose back to set up this trap, and I was getting more and more excited. It's like this is really cool. He's gonna unleash the hotel. The hotel's gonna screw with her, mm-hmm. and that was over in ten seconds. Yeah. He opens like, his no. mind. They have a little fight. He opens up his mind prison, he, and then. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, he basically she she's there what? and he goes wide eyes. Uh, the little girl goes wide eyes. They attack Rose. Rose comes after them. Um, he tells her to run. Swipes. He's like he's got the axe. I'm like just hit her now. And she's like I'll make you an offer. You can join us. Just fucking hit her. It was the same scene. And like I like shining. Oh yeah. right, I see what, why they did that. Yeah. Well, and she was like, Are we gonna do this? And I was like, Yes, finally. And he's like, Ah. So he stabs her, and he basically smashes the the axe into her shoulder. But then she or, just yeah. pulls it out and hits him, and she's and hits she his the head. Hits his artery. He's going to bleed out and die, basically, uh, because of what she did there. And then, But then as she's about to feed on him and she's like, wow, you taste like whiskey. You know, she can feel all the things that he went through when he was a kid and his fear. Um, and she kind of lets her guard down a little bit. And then that's when, uh, she's like, like Alex has said, he, yeah, mm-hmm. he had been locking up all of the sort of ghosts. And he unleashes them at the same time at her. And when they see just somebody with shine or with power or maybe they don't powerful. even give a shit about the shine. They just come straight yeah. after her. And and visually, I mean, on paper, that shit works because your mind can go crazy with, oh, the twins do this and then the butler does this. But but on screen, it just doesn't quite work. It yeah, feels like people in dead. costumes 
I'm not even talking about the special effect, but like the visual when they huddle around her. It just feels like people in costumes. Yeah, they just touch her, touch and then that's it. She's gone. Well, they do more in touch her. They like get their fingers, fingers under up her, her skin. skin and it was then, just like, too it was rushed. It like was. we spent so yeah. much time. They wasted 10, 15 minutes. They they go into Danny's mind and they immediately go to the hedge maze. Mm-hmm. And then they're running around the snow. That's like 10 minutes of this movie. And there's some cool stuff that they do there. Mm-hmm. But you cut that whole scene out and then you give me 10 more minutes of like the ghosts of the Overlook terrorizing Rose, yeah. I w- that would have been a much better movie. Could what- it, couldn't he just release them yeah. out wherever? Mm-hmm. Did he have to go back to the hotel? Because he was trapping no, these ghosts I think outside he- of the hotel because he never went back. I, I think they're more survive. strong. They're stronger there. I was just okay. about to say that. They probably have more power within their, yeah. their home, okay. basically. So uh, one part I didn't want to spoil in the review. I wish I would have said something about it, but I'm glad I didn't. Uh, if you're here, the there's amazing visuals in this there's a sequence where rose she's a bit she's a bit of a tracker herself she climbs up on top of her rv and you know sits and meditates and she can basically go out of her body and kind of transport herself and these visuals are so cool because uh, they play with perspective. It's like the earth and her, and and, and then she's slowly going able, going into you know the location, into mm-hmm. the city, reaching the house, and the way she just gracefully places her bare feet down. It's just so cool. I was like, wow, this is really creative. And then, then the way she enters the house, the camera tilts, and she kind of just slides into the house and lands. And she's all confident, and she's like, oh, sleeping, eh? <laughs> and she looks around, oh, you organize your your thoughts like this. That's and, cute. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> and she's going through her thoughts to try to fuck with her and trap her and, and, yep. and feed on her eventually. But I love it. It was a sprung trap from Abra. Slams on her hand. The cabinet closes ah! and then man abra looking scary as fuck she's actually the scariest thing in the film in that scene where she's gotten like no fucking eyes and she's like smiling Terrible blue hair she's yeah. like i got you you know and, she, and and this is the first time we've seen rose scared so we're like oh shit we're scared what the fuck is going on and she manages to go into Rose's mind and look through her cathedral. She's like, look at these file cabinets. I have a whole cathedral in my head bragging. And she's like, oh, really? <laughs> Goes in there, starts going through all this shit. And, you know, it's such a great scene. That was worth the price of admission alone. I really thought it was well done. It was better executed than a similar scene I've seen. And I don't know if it's a Stephen King uh, adaption, but y'all seen Dreamcatcher? Long time ago. Remember where they go into like the mine in the yeah. library? So it's hokey. <laughs> yes. This is way done be- way better. And this group of uh, feeders, I'll call them from now on. I think they have a name, but I don't remember it. Knox Club or Not Club or something. Yeah. Like but these feeders, uh, you know, are, are tracking her down. They say, you know what, Rose, you can't come with us because you might have been compromised. And she murders this damn bitch because mm-hmm. she really wants to take her on herself. But she agrees and stays behind. So this whole group goes out and, um, you know, they set a trap for her. Dan finally meets up with uh, <laughs> Abra and he's like, <laughs> he feels uncomfortable because he notices how young she is. He didn't know who it was. And they're sitting yeah. together. They're talking. He's like, I'm not supposed to be talking to some trouble. young girl. No, just tell people you're my uncle. So he becomes Uncle Danny um, and they take a road trip, essentially. Uh, to take out these feeders because they are killing kids and they want to do the right thing. And they manage to get a lot of them. They do a hunting rifle. They grab hunting rifles, shoot a bunch of them. I guess they don't have healing powers so much. uh, They they don't have enough. They don't have um, enough to stop bullets, right? Uh, And and they're running out of steam. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's so sad that... His friend, Billy, who, yeah, Billy. No. Uh, so when he's homeless and when he's aimless, Billy sees him and he senses that Danny is a good guy. Like, hey, maybe he's got and he, sparkle. He offers him eyes. a job and he's in the AA and he's just so fucking nice. But he dies because this and goddamn this bitch, uh, the the chick from the beginning of the film. And I thought there was gonna be a payoff. Did you guys kind of feel like? Maybe she was going to turn on the knot club or something. Oh, she's evil. No, no she, You I thought she was evil yeah. straight from the beginning? Well, she wasn't feeding on, like, like innocence. She was feeding on, like, fucking pedophiles. She wasn't feeding and, at all. 
well, taking advantage of them and, and torturing them. Well, torturing, but she wasn't stealing yeah, the she shine. Was, oh, she was well, just torturing okay, pedophiles. Okay, so she wasn't. She, that's right. She because was doing they her own her justice. Into, yeah. Doing her own justice. Well, she's a vigilante, and that's like kind of admirable. She's using her powers to get back at people and to fuck them up so they stop doing this bullshit. Mm-hmm. So I thought maybe there might be some good in her or something that she it's would turn. Gone. But no, it's gone. Yeah. She's, and and she ends up fucking killing uh, our, our um, you know, a really good character, Billy, uh, his friend who went out to kill all these. And, and God damn it, Billy, he told you that you don't know what's you. You are not in this life. OK, well, he didn't know. listen to Danny. He didn't Danny's know. like, do not go next to her. He's like, Billy, don't get near. Her. And as she's dying, she's like, kill yourself. It's because she has uh, she's a pusher, mm-hmm. which has yeah. the power to influence him. And Let's he just grabs the go. edge. Yeah, yeah, I like the way that they, they did different things with the shine in this. Some of yeah. the shine, like some of them are trackers. Some of them are pushers. Yeah, uh, they, you didn't need to kill Billy. I know you didn't need to kill Billy. Uh, I was like, no, but stop it, I ben. didn't want Billy. I don't, I'm not going to dock the film for it because oh, no. it does have story purpose later. Uh, they basically so are able to capture Abra, uh, the crow who wasn't there, who didn't get caught by the trap, actually went to where um, she, she was um, sort of uh, projecting yep. and killed her father. Who was supposed to be on watch? Who who know what happened the man there? Was the man was, was drinking. Drink. <laughs> oh, that's right. They showed the bottle. You're probably like, right. Uh, he drunk and, and he killed her and he captured her and he's driving her back to Rose and he says, "You know, you lost people. I we lost people, but the outcome was still the same. That was for nothing." And you feel it because it's like it's true. Uh, all these people died and he's like, and so she's at her lowest point and you're like, "Fuck!" But then she's reaching out to Danny. He can't hear her because he's drugged her and shit. Yeah. And not only is he drugging her, but he's also blocking her radio signal stuff. It's one thing, yeah, something he can do. Mm-hmm. And, that was a really cool scene. It was yeah. one of my favorite favorite ones that I didn't quite know where it was going and it was just very very satisfying which scene so when they're in the car where yeah. Danny kind of takes over Abra's body yes. and he's having he's, he's talking with the crow saying like you know like oh why are you laughing <laughs> yeah, what are you, so you, 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 you can like, tell over. she's a great actress because she she seems like a different person yeah. when yeah. she's yeah. talking to him and he's like wait a minute who is it? And then if you haven't seen the movie, like, I don't know. This is the spoiler section, but, like, the scene is so good where the guy's not wearing his – he's like, I, you know, you guys, you're so arrogant. He's like, what do you mean I'm arrogant? It's like, I know you think you're going to live forever, yeah. which is why you don't wear your seatbelt. And then he just <laughs> he slams the car into a tree, and he flies to the windshield and dies. It's like, that's so that cool. That was so fucking cool. I loved yeah. it, man. So I, I was like, mm-hmm. these scenes, that's why – it works as its own thing, and it does its own thing. But here is where it falls apart. So then, mm-hmm. once you get all that, and all these guys are dead, and the crow is dead, and Abra is just, well, hey, we had to kill yeah. those. She's walking by herself. She'll eventually run or hitchhike or something. But Rose appears right in front of her, and Abra, you know, is bows up, and she's not afraid of her, and she just walks right through her, you yeah. know, and and that's it. Abra uh, Rose is like that little bitch and so she drinks all of the freaking shine that she's got in her reserves for one final battle and you're like this is gonna be the yes, best battle ever that's what we wanted but unfortunately <laughs> it's not the worst battle ever but we wanted a little bit more so they go to the shining he drives her up there and he's like fur you stay here in the car abra danny i'm gonna go wake it up and i'm like oh shit are we gonna see jack is he gonna be still dead in the maze by the way they did this shot where eventually they throw rose into the maze and i thought when you zoomed out i was i was looking for jack's dead body frozen there somewhere (laughs) but anyway so he goes in there to wake it up and we have a scene and i'm like are we going to see Jack? And we, they do, they, we do see Jack. Yes. yes. But it's not Jack, you know, they don't use Jack Nicholson. They don't use de-aging. They don't use CGI. They just use an actor that kind of has a vague resemblance to I mean, They did to the him. same thing with young Danny and Danny's mom. They, they, yeah. they, they, they did mm-hmm. their best to make them kind of look the same. Yeah. But they're not trying to make them the same person. Yeah, right. No and, and what he's talking about is they do recreate scenes from the original yeah. using the new actress, the mom, where she she's screaming yeah. as the axe is coming through the door. Uh, and then Danny, as a little kid, riding his, uh, you know, tr- what big, is wheel. big wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so, you know, he talks with Jack. Jack turns out to be the bartender. 
Uh, who, I'm Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Lloyd. He's like, I'm sorry, mistaken. sir. You got me. He starts talking like it's his dad, you know, like, you know, he's talking about drinking and talking about uh, what happened, where they lived after the events of The Shining and they were doing OK. And then he talks about how his mom died. And he's like, I just thought you might want to know. And he's like, I'm, I'm sorry. I think you had me confused for somebody else. And he said, you know, that you. house is trying to keep that straight face. And he's like, no, I'm not acknowledging I am not Jack. But he just keeps it up. Danny keeps it up because he's like, I know I, he knows he's in there somewhere. And yeah. then finally, it's so good because he pours him a drink. And he's like, you know, have, have some, sir. And, and he, doesn't want, he doesn't want to drink. And eventually Jack comes out and he takes the drink and you're like, oh, shit, that's Jack because he's drinking now. And then he's talking about how, you know, these things that a man has to deal with and the mouths to feed and this. And Jack starts to come out and he's like, this is what you need, you know, and he's trying to get his son to fucking succumb to the same sort of, you know, madness that Jack did. And but he says, no, I don't want that. He slams the glass and then he disappears. I was like, that's great. This is how you handle it respectfully. Yep. It didn't feel hokey. It didn't feel cheap. They didn't do some big CGI monster or something. <laughs> it was great. Now, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I don't know about Danny becoming Jack. I guess it makes sense. You know, that, it's, how, that, it's how it happened in the book, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you you got to follow the I, book. I mean, both the, the original Shining book and, and in this one. So in ja- in the original Shining the, book and in the original movie, oh. the house kind of takes over Jack, mm-hmm. but Jack is still there. And Jack that actually has times where he gains back control and tells Danny that he loves him and then blows up. And, okay. And so it kind of so, makes oh, sense. Then, that, then, then I don't know. Yeah, then what the fuck am I talking about? Because that's exactly how it goes here. Yeah. And, and and Danny is going back and forth, and Abra's trying to say, I know you're still in there, yeah, because he out. goes on a rampage kind of uh, like Same injury. Same, same injury, yeah. Leg injury Not and everything. Yeah. injury. But that's when I felt like it was doing a little bit too much of the greatest no, I'm with hits. you there, too. Yeah, yeah I'm with uh, you. You know, at least with the imagery, because when Rose finally comes to this hotel and she walks in, she can kind of sense something. And, mm-hmm. and then when she sees the bloody hallway, she smiles and kind of, oh, I like this. This place is cool. This place is cool, but it turns out to be not so cool. But mm-hmm. in these little imagery scenes, I don't know, it's just it, it's not doing its own thing anymore. It's, it's basically trying to do The Shining over again within a span of 10 minutes. And it doesn't <sighs> really work. I want it so much more. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Danny lets out. Uh, well, first... They spring another trap for her. Abra brings That's her right. to the maze. And uh, she's like, oh, you know, you think you can hurt me. You can't hurt me. But then Abra's like cutting her legs, you know, <laughs> just running by her, cutting her legs and distracting her, basically. And she thinks that they're in her head, but they're actually in uh, Danny's. Danny's head because you see this thing behind her as she's arguing with Abra coming Lock closer marks. and closer. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Is that a coffin? Is that a monster or something? <laughs> but it, it's one of uh, Danny's boxes, and the box nearly gets her. But she, you know, is like, this isn't, you know, your head. This is somebody else's. And that's when she realizes it's Danny. And then mm-hmm. she has her conversation with Danny like he's special. Where have you been? I've what? missed you. Mm-hmm. So he's been great. drunk for yeah. <laughs> 20 years. Fantastic. Um, but just with those those small little things. And so I think overall why I didn't give it a nine, because honestly, that's a negative one point for me where it was a little bit too much of the greatest hits there. And I guess maybe another negative one for the truncated uh, length of that. Um, and You and had a, a Stephen King pacing. ending that was good, that makes sense. And that's it's rare, and we we, so we talk about it. it, it <laughs> Is was it really good. that bad? Why are y'all trying? He's made like eighty six novels. Yeah, or so something. there are a lot of them that kind of fall apart at the end. This one did not fall apart at the end. Like I like the ending. Yeah, yeah. It just visually, visually. And, the, and the amount of time that you spent on it just enough, didn't yeah. didn't do very well. And True. so if you have two and a half hours. True. Shorten some of the other stuff because what yeah. people came here for is the final fight at the Overlook. We want to see the ghosts battle everything else, and we it just we didn't get any of it. So that's almost two points right there. So there's the explanation, yeah. and, and then at the very end, uh, you know, when he's about to axe Abra as a possessed Danny, right? Um, 
she says, well, Danny made one more stop. He went to the boiler room. Mm -hmm. And then he realized, oh, fuck, you're going to blow up the hotel. He's like, oh, shit, I'll be back. (laughs) Well, no, he goes back and forth between Danny. He went to go check the boiler room. He's like, oh, I'll be back. (laughs) You see it? He's like, oh, yeah, it is on fire. (laughs) Oh, fuck. I'm back. (laughs) But then Danny takes back over and and he he forces, he, he doesn't. You know, he tries to yeah. get the guy not to turn it off, and he sits down and he sees his mother lovingly touching his cheek and saying, "It's okay, we're gonna die." And you know, well, the, you're gonna die. You're, I'm already well, dead. Yeah, she's, she's dead. already dead, but you're you're gonna die. Um, in this place, it kind of sucks that he's gotta die in that place, but hey, uh, it was for a good cause. Uh, it's and cleansed film, now. It's cleansed. That's what they said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I she guess. said. It burned it out. Is yeah, what she fine. Said. You kill it with fire. That's what Piers. Okay. <laughs> so then, uh, at the end, uh, you know, they they put forth the notion that you know when you die, it's not really the end. Uh, and so Danny uh, is happy, and he's basically in her mind, almost like Tony was in Danny's mind. Now uh, Dan can sort of visit with Abra, and they can have conversations mm-hmm. because he's. He's basically Obi Wan Kenobi, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we went full circle to Star Wars. I did it! I fucking did it! <laughs> All right. So and and I thought uh, the, uh, there was some other great scenes too, uh, like the scenes with the little kitty, you know, walking yeah, around like the old folks' just, home. He worked at the hospice, and the kitty yeah. would visit the people. The kitty would have the a kitty sixth has sense. A shine. <laughs> Maybe he does knows yeah. knows who's about to pass, and you know Danny offers them comfort, and he like brings up things of their past that they really liked. I thought there was touching, you know, and yeah, a like really well scenes. done scene. And I was like, man, if I if I have to go in a hospice and I have to die, I want Danny by my side. You know, well, he he did. Like, yeah, well, well, Danny's he, gone. He so. <laughs> He's the best. Hot. They should have been paying him well uh, yeah. over there, but I guess I don't know. He was a volunteer or something. Well, so great, really get, yep. well, great yeah. scenes. Another great thing is they kind of develop their villains, and this is a, a mark of a good film when you, when the devil, villains have their own lore What's and character stuff. Character development. Character oh, development amazing. on the villain group. <laughs> They've got this old man who's seen it all, but then he's the first to die. And then, you know, Rose goes over to him as he's dying, going, <laughs> you know, it's disgusting and he's turning into a monster. Um, but yeah, she, you feel she, attention with them too because they're like, we're lacking supplies. We yeah. need more shine. They care for so each they, other yeah. in their own fucked mm-hmm. up way and, and they come up with creative plans. And and uh, so there, there was good lore all around. And um, just a, a great little cinematic universe, these two films. We don't need another. I know they try to set up, uh, you know, something. That's what I was going to ask you. Would you want to see another? Because nah. I think this is a good stopping point. Yeah, let's do T1, T2. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't need to There's do. nothing else after this for book. They do I say. So. Oh, okay. I she's like, You're, what does it feel like to be the last one, says Danny to Rose in the final battle. And she's like, oh, honey, I'm, I'm not the last yeah, one. Yeah. That's what I was like, okay, so there's it. other of these feeders out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Abra's still around, so she can fight them. But I, I, I don't need a film of Abra fighting the rest hey, of the you ain't got Danny. Mm-hmm. Nope. Especially with the hotel gone. So that story yep. spent, Stephen King. Let's uh, let's get some more original stories. I would like for your stuff to be adapted some more because, you know, it leads to great films. And this mm-hmm. was um, a fantastic this is one of them, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, be sure to subscribe and ding our dong. Buy shirts. Yes. Or else.